Hello everybody, it's Double Tap on YouTube once again. Sean, we're getting into a stride. This is our third video. I know, this is easy. We should like, have done it sooner. Subscribe. Uh, Ring the bells. bells. <laughs> Something about bells. <laughs> what's, what's the bell all about? I don't understand. Anyway, uh, today I want to uh, put out a plea. I'm going to put out a plea. Oh, we, we're after money again. Perfect. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that'll come later, yeah. We'll get to that point eventually. You know, we'll do that that thing they do where it's like, you know, well, if you subscribe to Double Tap Plus, uh, oh, you can yes. have uh, 8 million extra episodes a day. That's not happening over here, by the way. I'm not doing 8 million extra episodes. I'm doing enough. No. Exactly right. Double Tap only fans. It'll happen. Sitting here talking for 10 minutes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Keep this up. Oh. I'm going back to shelf stacking. Okay. Well, I, I would if they'd let me. But no, unfortunately, they won't I keep getting denied the opportunity. So what are you playing for? So I love new tech. So do you, right? We love new technology. We love exciting technology. And um, there's a piece of tech that came across my uh, radar just a couple of weeks back, actually. And it's uh, almost like a typewriter equivalent, a modern-day typewriter. Now, I've heard about these devices before. What essentially they do is they're called distraction-free devices, right? So you can type on them, usually for people who write books or blogs or whatever, and they just want to write, but they want no distractions, no notifications. They don't want to use an iPad. They don't want to use a laptop because, you know, they'll end up drifting off onto an email or they'll drift off onto Twitter or, or whatever it might be. You know, they're going, to, they're going to drift off and do something else. They're always getting distracted by notifications, stuff that's going on. You just want to type. You just want to focus on that. Right. I, get, so, I totally understand that. Yes. Well, Happens yeah, to me exactly. all the time. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you just want to focus on that one task. And it's funny because, of course, we've built these devices now. We've kind of got to a place where everything's in one device. And now we're kind of starting to unpick all that. You know, we're starting to see, nah, yes. you know, I, I just want a typewriter. I just want my old typewriter back. So I want you to think about this like a typewriter, but the difference being the paper is e-ink. So kind of like one of those Kindle tablets that you would get, the Kindle, um, what do you call them, e-readers. Yeah. Um, and a Kindle. You can, you're also known as a Kindle, yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah. Hey, well done. Randomly searching for a word I've already said. Um, but, yes, yeah, so you, you get these devices, and uh, there's, there's not that many on the market at the moment. There's, there's a few. And we're starting, I mean, there's certainly more uh, tablets like Remarkable is one I've heard about, uh, where it's like a tablet device and you can write on it, and then that can be digitally turned into text that can then be copied onto your computer. So that's like a notepad type thing. But this is more about typing. So you have a QWERTY keyboard, you have a very small, and, and there's different types of these devices. The company FreeWrite is the one I'm talking about here, which is FreeWrite, W-R-I-T-E. And what they've done is they've developed a number of these over the years um, where, you know, they have, some of them have screens where you can see a little bit of a picture, but they're all kind of six-inch grayscale screens. And it's all kind of built on the top of the device. So it's quite a flat device got the keyboard and then above it this tiny little screen but this new one they've brought out is called alpha and the alpha one has i would say maybe a four or five line lcd display or e-ink i should say display which is very small grayscale uh, i don't know how anybody can read this to be perfectly honest but you know mm. clearly people have a better vision than us can manage it and that sounds fine but i was looking at this device thinking hmm how cool would it be if this had audio output? Almost like a screen reader built into it where, you know, it was able to read back what I had written. You know, I could arrow up and down and listen back to the text I'd typed, you know, get keyboard echo as you would on a screen reader. I thought, how cool would that be? Now, I did check into this particular device. There's no headphone jack on it. There's no Bluetooth on it. So there's no way for you to connect a device to get audio out. And there doesn't seem to be any accessibility mentioned. Now, that, to be perfectly honest, guys, doesn't surprise me at all, okay? This is nothing new. These kind of devices come out, they're great ideas, and they work for the mainstream, but there's never any accessibility consideration. There's probably an argument to say, well, if the blind person can't read the screen, why would you want to use this anyway? Missing out entirely the fact that if you put audio into it, we would be able to use it, and it would be a brilliant little note-taker. Now, for blind people, there are a number of note-taker options, but they're often Braille-led Right, so you get these Braille led devices like the the Brilliant series or the the Focus series from Vespero. These are all different types of Braille input keyboards. So if you've seen them, you know they they have a Braille keyboard, which is the QWERTY, not quirky, not quirky, 
<laughs> no, no, six not Perky. buttons. Perkins. Yes. <laughs> I was getting my QWERTY and my Perkins mixed up and end up with Perky, um, which I think is actually not a bad idea. For I like it. That. Yeah, I think we should rename everything. Um, but yeah, so they've got that Perkins style keyboard on there. You've got your Braille display where you can feel the dots as they raise up and down. It's a kind of mechanical uh, display that shows up, almost like an old dot matrix display. Um, and that is is our kind of note taker option. But those note taker options are really expensive, Sean. Right? I mean, we're talking thousands upon thousands of dollars. Absolutely, yes. Almost inaccessible because of their price tag. Um, yeah. Now, th there are cheaper ones just coming through over the last few years. We've started to see more affordable ones, but you're still talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars even for the cheapest Braille display. So enter the Alpha from Freerite. And you might be thinking, okay, so why is he getting excited about this? It's got no accessibility on it. He can't see it. So why is he getting excited? Well, I'm not getting excited for the Alpha because I'm not going to oh. buy the Alpha. I would love to buy the Alpha, Sean. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get into that in a minute. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really interested why you're so excited, but carry on. Why I'm so excited by that. Okay. Well, that's... Look, I, I want the idea. I want the option for... I, I want the option for distraction-free writing as well. Okay. We have a blog here. We have doubletaponair.com. I, I want to put more content up there. Sometimes I just want to type. I just want to type in peace and quiet and not have endless distractions, notifications coming in over the top, which are continually interrupting my screen reader as I go along. I just want to type. And I like the idea of just being able to take this device away. It's small. It's very portable. I mean, it's almost a laptop without a screen. I mean, I know it does have a small screen at the top of it, but if you took the screen it's off, it's about the same size. Yes, yeah, it's, it's exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's yes. the keyboard without a touchpad, really. It's like the keyboard's been moved forward, and yep. you've, where the touchpad would be would, is basically a tiny little screen. And it's really simple. you know. But there are smarts in this, and it's important to understand this. There are some smarts in here as well. So it's not exclusively... Um, you know, some kind of basic device that all it's doing is just writing to an SD card. It's connected to the cloud as well. I mean, it's updating Google Docs as it goes along. It's got automatic saving. So it's got an operating system in there. It just doesn't maybe have the ability yet to have any kind of accessibility, or if it does have the ability, it's not being realized. So that's why I'm excited about it. That's why I like the idea. And that's, that's my plea. That is my plea to this mm. company, to consider everybody with this product. Because I think you're missing something here. I think you're missing out on something. Because this kind of device would open up this kind of note taker to us blind people as well. All right. Okay. A couple of takes on this. Uh, firstly, do you think this is going to be a popular emerging technology? Do you think this is a new sector? But I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced by this distraction free. How many people don't know how to turn on do not disturb for one thing? Or, you know... I, I, do you think there's enough of a demand for a device like this before we even get to, well, how about making it accessible so blind people can use it? How about for the mainstream in general? Do you think What's this is going to take anything? off? It's about choice, right? It's, 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 well, no, 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 it's not about choice. I, I mean, in the ideal world, it's about choice, but it's also about business. If only three people buy these things, then it's, you're not going to see another one ever. And if the entire sector of distraction-free devices doesn't take off, then forget about it. It's gone. Because but that's the same I, with anything, right? I mean, you know, BlackBerry yes. was a fantastically popular smartphone until something else came along and destroyed it. So should, should I have, in hindsight, never bought a BlackBerry? Because no, there was always that chance that company was going to die off, so perhaps I shouldn't bother. Was the BlackBerry accessible from the initial get-go? But that's not the question you're asking. The question you're asking is, no. well, hang on, how popular is this particular category of devices, irrespective yes. of its accessibility or not? And the answer is yes. it doesn't matter. Oh, it does matter. Well, it, oh, it, it, only, it, oh. only ma it, it only matters on the other side, right? We can't. If you want to look 20 years down the line, I, I can't tell you the answer to that. But what I can tell you is that right now they are selling. They must be selling because they continually develop them. They're continually making them. So someone's buying them. How long has this been available? I don't know how long this category has been around. I must admit, this, this is a fairly new category to me. I've always looked for something like this. This is where it's, this is coming from. I've always looked for something that I could just take away. I had one yeah. of these. I remember something like this years ago. I cannot remember the make it was. But I had it at school. So we're talking mid-90s. And 1890s. Yes. Sorry, hang on. Is that right? Yeah, mid nineties. Yeah, I was just reminding myself. <laughs> Did I go? Yeah, and it was the nineteen nineties. Thank you, Sean. Um, okay, thank you. And you know, it had a key. It was very similar to this. It had the QWERTY keyboard. 
I had the tiny little e-ink display. I think it was more just an LCD display with like four lines of text in it. Yeah. And what happened was the whole thing did write to memory. But then what would happen is, and this was the most hilarious thing in the world, you would connect it to a Mac. And what you had to do was you had to open up Clarisworks on the Mac. Oh, classic. Yes. Yeah. Open up Clarisworks, get a new text uh, document open. Then you would plug in via serial cable this device. Why? Wow. And it was literally like you were tipping the letters one by one into the Mac because it would take one letter at a time and it would just populate the text document oh, on the Mac. Right. <laughs> now, the funny thing about that was, in those days, if you, for whatever reason, and it happened all the time, if the serial cable became disconnected, you lost everything. Everything just oh, fell out of the machine, and it was gone. Right. So it just so, purged everything, dumped yeah. and forgotten about. Yeah, it's gone, mate. Yeah, forget so about was it. it. And the amount of notes I lost and things I lost over time. But it was a great idea, and I always looked for something similar. I always wanted something similar to that, and it was just a case of trying to find something that would be accessible. Now, the reality is I haven't found anything as accessible. The closest we have, going back to what I said earlier about these kind of Braille-type devices, is what's called the Mantis Q40. That is a yes. QWERTY keyboard, but it has a Braille display in it, which is great. doesn't have audio, but then that's not a major problem because you're connecting it to a device that does, you know, a laptop or a phone or whatever. But, you know, we're talking over $4,000 for that. So, you know, hello. What does, I mean, I, again, with the, with the Mantis there, we're talking about connecting it to something that is accessible, uh, bringing the distraction factor back into things. Um, I, I, what I think you're actually looking for is a Windows or Mac computer, which is just built into a keyboard. I think that is that the dream. Nice, yeah. Yes. Uh, so this, uh, you do see, you can buy little dongles now, almost you know USB pen drives or like the Amazon Fire TV stick sort of size. That simply they're a computer on a stick, and you can plug those into a, a TV. Connect, connect, connect connect a bluetooth keyboard to it and you've got a computer go in there now obviously that's no good for on the go what we're talking about here is almost a note taker style thing so you could take with you on the train type away and save a document without uh, having to uh, you know have a, a, a entire computer with you i get that but still i think I, I want those extra functionality that comes with a fully formed OS. If this I think thing... you're missing my point. I think you've missed my point, which is okay. that I want this to be a choice for me. I could, If I had full vision, I could buy this tomorrow, right? That's the point. I don't have to say... I, I, I get into the... I, I understand your argument about, hmm. oh, well, yeah, it's great. I can have a laptop and I can have everything I want. Yeah, that's fine. But I don't want that. I, I mean, I've got a laptop and I'm happy with it. But when I want to sit down and do some serious work and serious typing... And serious writing, especially when you want to check things, you want to spend time going over documents, checking over yeah. it. It takes time and you get so many notifications and distractions. It's all very well saying, yeah, turn off, turn on, do not disturb or whatever. Yeah, I've still easy. got my phone that can keep me up to date with all those other turn things. It it's not that I'm cutting myself off. <laughs> no, but, but the point is, it's the device itself I want to be not distracted on. So I don't want to cut everything off. I want, I still want to be connected to the world. I don't want to go and live in a, a, a Montana in a cabin, you know, disconnected Hello, from the planet. We love, we love you. you. Yeah, for, for all our Montana viewers, <laughs> I, um, I, I, it's not a slight on you. I do understand what you're saying. I, I do get it. But it's almost that, that impossible thing that if I get this or if I do this, then my productivity is going to be suddenly a lot better than it is now. I'm going to be far more organised and on top of I'm not of getting the choice to find out. That's my point. So, you know, I, I can go and spend $4,000 on the Mantis Q40, or I could spend $400 on this. Now, I'm not saying $400, $400. is a... But 400 versus 4,000, are you serious? And by uh, the way, no. the Mantis doesn't talk either. No, it doesn't. Exactly right. I mean, so that's, I'm still that's... no further forward, really. And it, if you don't read Braille... By the way, not all blind people use Braille. It's so a very small you... number of people who are blind read Braille, exactly. <laughs> so that's in the same boat. I I, I don't know. I, I suppose I can't get out of my bubble. Is I honestly not sure how useful this is when I've got a phone in my pocket, when I've got a laptop I can take with me if I want to get some work done. I get the distraction aspect of it. Uh, if this was something like 50 bucks, then maybe, okay, I get it. It's a portable... Typewriter, well, the more popular it gets, point. 
the more chance that has. And the thing, and this is again the point, right? The more popular these devices become, the more chances are that they will become either replicated by other companies or other versions of this will come out and they will be cheaper. But the key point, and the, the point I'm making here is, and my plea today is please consider accessibility from day one because you will increase your potential market share by a lot. And if you don't know or you're not sure if blind people will buy your product, well, here's the thing. For sure they won't if they can't. That is an excellent point, and I can't find any argument against it. No, you're absolutely right. The thing is, I mean, we need to get into the tech specs here, right? What OS is it running? Is it bespoke something on a chip? We're going to talk more about it soon. I'm I'm in contact with the company. We're going to get them on. We're going to talk about this. I want to put this to them as well. You know, I'm not just singling these guys out, but this particular product I am because it is exactly what I'm looking for. (laughs) I want it. Yeah, I want to have that. I would buy this tomorrow if this was accessible to me. I would. I'd spend my hard-earned money, (laughs) in quotes, um, the money part, not the (laughs) hard-earned, although arguably... (laughs) Uh, but no, I seriously, I would buy this product tomorrow. I think it's a great idea. I love the concept of it. I think a lot of blind people would be interested in it. I don't know how many, but again, if we can't buy it, then you'll never know. Yes. You know, let's just try and encourage more businesses, more companies, more developers to just realize there's a community of us out there. We're not all sitting reading Braille, listening to the radio, you know, waiting for someone else to feed us. That's not how this works when you're blind. There are many of us in employment. There are lots of us out there, lots of us doing things, and we want to do more. We want to have fun, enjoyable lives, do fun things, and technology can enable that, but it can only enable it if it's accessible, and this isn't. So what are you doing about it? It's a very fine and valid plea, Stephen Scott. I will agree with you there. Uh, We're back soon with more Double Tap on YouTube. Thank you, Sean. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. And don't forget, you can follow us and you can find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search for Double Tap. You can find us on doubletaponair.com. There's lots of articles and news there you can go and read. And you can also get in touch either through the comments here or email us feedback at doubletaponair.com. We'll catch you next time.